Hi, Sequoia families. It's Mrs. McCollum, Mrs. Card, and Mrs. Clark. We're so glad to be with you today for our weekly STEM challenge. And we're gonna start with a story from Mrs. Clark. And I want you to be thinking about how seeds could get us ready and prepared for an engineering design challenge. Enjoy the story. Find a special person to enjoy this book with. Then see if you can find some maple seeds outside. Think about what do you notice and what do you wonder. The book is called Next Time You See a, see a Maple Seed by Emily Morgan. Next time you see a maple seed, pick it up and hold it in your hand. Have you ever wondered what's inside or why it can fly? or how it can grow into a towering tree. Explore these wonders of nature with a child in your life. Toss a handful of maple seeds into the air and watch them twirl to the ground. Look around to see if you can find the tree that made them. Open one up to see what's inside. Then read together to discover how these ordinary seeds are actually quite extraordinary. And the next time you see a maple seed, you will see it with new eyes. And the memory of sharing nature with someone special. What a great story. I actually happen to have a maple seed. So I wanted to think about my observations and my questions. And it's always good to write down what we observe and the questions, the new questions that we have. So if you'd like to do this with me, you can grab a scratch piece of paper, draw a T-chart like we've done in STEM lab before, and on the left side, you can write the words, I notice. And on the right side, write the words, I wonder. Help, it will help you to organize your thoughts. Here are some of my observations and questions. So as I notice this maple seed, I notice its color and it's tan, maybe a light brown color. It's thin on one end and it's roundish on the other. I saw a lot of these outside in my yard and there's lots of different sizes. And it also has a wing shape. I have a question for you. Have you seen these little guys outside in your yard? They're all over the place right now. So that makes me wonder, I wonder why. Also, I wonder, does its shape help it fly. I noticed in the story that Mrs. Clark was reading that these things move and they move in a very interesting way. Do animals eat maple seeds? What makes it twirl? And then of course, you know, the other question, why do they spin around? <laughs> so, when I think about some of the questions that Ms. McCullum have of I wonder, I wonder why the seeds spin and fly. Why do you think that the maple trees produce seeds that fly and that spin and move? Can you think of any other seeds that like to travel, maybe in different ways? What are some other ways that seeds can be dispersed? So I want us to take a look at this picture here. There are four different ways that seeds are dispersed. 
um, think about why just we need seeds to be dispersed. Why is that important in our world? Um, but one way that seeds can be dispersed is by the wind, and that's the way that our little helicopter, our little maple seed works, is the wind carries it and it flies. But also I can think of dandelions. We have a lot of dandelions in our yards that like to be dispersed with wind. Animals can disperse seeds. If you think about all the seeds that are in fruits and they carry them around and eat them and move them from one um, place to another. Water is a really great way to disperse seeds and also force. Some um, plants actually emit their seeds by ejecting them by using force. So think about um, why we need to disperse those seeds, why that's an important part of our world. So we're going to use the engineering design process that we've talked about all year for a challenge involving our maple seeds. So inspired by maple seeds, how can I design and create a helicopter? So raise your hand if you came to family engineering night. No, I'm just kidding. Just if you made it to family engineering night this past fall, you may remember making the paper helicopter and launching it off the balcony. That was a really big, exciting uh, station for a lot of the kids that came. And just seeing their helicopter just twirl and spin all the way to the bottom level, you know, right there in front of the cafeteria. So, we have brought back this challenge and want to see if you can design and create a helicopter. We're gonna use a template uh, similar to what you made at Family Engineering Night, if you remember that. And so you're gonna have this particular uh, template uh, to try out. And Mrs. Card is going to give us a little bit more information about that. So when you have your template, um, what you're going to do is you're actually going to cut on the dark black lines of your template, and then you're going to fold it on the dotted lines, okay? So you're going to fold the C and the D over each other, and you're going to fold the A and the B down, and then this little part down here you're going to kind of fold up. And at the very bottom, you're gonna put a paper clip. I actually could not find a paper clip, so I used a piece of tape to kind of keep it together and to give it a little weight. Um, so if you don't have a paper clip, you could think of something else you could put down there. So then once you have all your pieces cut and folded and you've made your little um, helicopter, then you can put it up high. You can kind of let it fall and see if it will um, spin and rotate like a helicopter is supposed to do. There are different sizes on the template, so you can also make a little baby one. Um, maybe you can grab a friend um, or someone in your family and you can um, test out the two different sizes of paper clips, or excuse me, the two different sizes of helicopters um, and see how far they can each go. Maybe you can um, set a little bowl down and get practice doing some target practice to see if you can get your helicopter to get into the bowl. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do once you create your helicopters. So you're going to use these to help you get to the paper helicopter template website. There's two ways you can access it. Um, Ms. Hinton will have a link provided with the lesson as shown below. And then there's also a QR code that you can scan or your parents can scan to access this lesson and some fun extras that we have on there as well. So hopefully this inspires you to design and create your own helicopter. So what other materials could we use to make a helicopter? You can take a look around your house, make a list, or you can just say them out loud to, uh, to your partner, to your sibling or your parent, um, and challenge yourself to build another helicopter using different materials and test its ability to fly like a maple tree seed. What new questions do you have now? What new questions are you gonna come up with once you start the design process once again? Boys and girls, it's been great to be with you today. 
We hope you are staying healthy and well, and we can't wait to see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.